If you've been following our previous videos, we've introduced the topic of the Laplace transform and the inverse Laplace transform. But we haven't really seen why such transforms are particularly useful for us in engineering. One of the key uses for Laplace transforms is to solve different types of differential equations, which we've already seen in this topic. So in this video, we're going to apply the principles of the Laplace transform to the solution of a first order differential equation, the same type of equation that we've already seen in this topic, but previously we've had to solve using differential and integral calculus. What we'll see is that by using the Laplace transform, we'll avoid having to use differential and integral calculus to solve these differential equations. In our next video, we're also going to apply these same principles to a second order differential equation as well. Before we begin, we're going to list four steps that we're going to follow with this particular problem and with any given problem that we're going to solve using Laplace transforms. Step one is to take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation that we're given. Step two is to insert any given initial conditions. Step three, we're going to rearrange the equation for f of s. And then finally, step four, we're going to determine the expression for f of t by using the inverse Laplace transform. So for the example in this video, let's have a look at this circuit. We have a series RL circuit. And the current that flows through this circuit, the current I, is a function of time. And it's given by this equation here, Ri plus L di by dt equals zero. And the objective is to find a solution for I, the current I, given that the resistance R is 10 ohms and the inductance is one Henry. And we're also told the additional information that when time is zero, the current I equals three amps. But that's not a constant current. Uh, the current's gonna change over time. So if you've been following our previous videos, you recognize this particular problem is exactly the same as one that we've solved previously, but last time we solved it using sort of conventional uh, calculus methods um, to find the solution for the current I. This time we're going to use uh, the Laplace transform and the inverse Laplace transform to hopefully reach the same result. So let's begin with step one, which was to say that we take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. And so we can represent that like this. Um, we have the Laplace transform of the left-hand side being equal to the Laplace transform of zero on the right-hand side. And remembering that what we can do is break these transformations up into separate terms. So rather than the Laplace transform of the whole left-hand side, we can say that we have the Laplace transform of Ri plus the Laplace transform of L di by dt uh, being equal to the Laplace transform of zero. And again, one of the other things that we've mentioned previously is that anything that's a, a constant coefficient can be pulled outside of the Laplace transform. We're only interested in um, those, those functions with respect to time um, in, inside the transformation. And so our resistance, for example, is a constant. The resistance is 10 ohms. And so we can pull that resistance outside and likewise with our inductance L. And so we end up with something like this, R times the Laplace transform of I plus L times the Laplace transform of DI by DT. So we can now apply Laplace transforms from our table of standard transforms. And the first transformation we have to make is for I. One thing to watch out for here is to remember that I is not a constant. And we mustn't um, refer to this particular row on the table. Remember that I is a function of time. So we can think of I as being like f of t. It's a function in terms of time. We're just calling it i uh, because we're interested in currents in this particular example. But let's not overlook the header here at the top of the table because we see that a function of time 
uh, transforms to f of s, a function in the s domain. Similarly, di by dt is the differential of this function with respect to time. So that's the same as saying d f of t by dt. And we see that in the table that this transforms to s f of s minus f0. One thing to watch out for here is notice the capital F of s, but we only have a small f for this f of 0, and this is going to become particularly relevant in just a few moments, but our small letter f is telling us that we're still in the time domain. There's still an element of the time domain here in this particular um, form, and that's, that's going to be important in just a few moments. Finally, the Laplace transform of zero uh, is still zero. So bearing all of that in mind, we have a result that looks like this. R f of s plus L s f of s minus f zero is equal to zero. So as it stands, this looks a little bit uh, unnecessarily complicated, but let's just try and look ahead at what we're trying to do here. Uh, just so hopefully this makes a little bit more sense. What we're trying to do is rearrange this particular expression in the, in the form f of s equals. And so when we have our expression in the form f of s equals whatever it's equal to, we can then apply the inverse transform to get our function of time being equal to whatever that, trans, that inverse transformation ends up being. And remember our function of time is current in our case, and so we'll have our equation in the form i equals. But as it stands, we've got a lot of capital Fs and small Fs and zeros and Ss here. We're going to hopefully try and solve some of that by inserting some of our initial values. So step two, if you remember, was to insert our initial values. We know that r is 10, uh, l is 1, um, and so we can insert those. But what we also know is that i equals 3 amps when t equals 0. Now for that I want to pick on this uh, term that I mentioned earlier, this small f of 0. And remember that the sort of um, convention is that small letters are in um, the time domain, so small f of 0, whereas capital F uh, is in the s domain, we have capital F of s. And so we have a hint here that this f of 0 that we've, we've inserted into our equation is still in the time domain. And when we say f of 0, we're really saying what is the function equal to when time is 0? Remember when we're in the time domain for this particular term. And so we know that when time equals 0, our function of time, in other words our current, is equal to 3. And so f of 0 is 3. And so knowing all of that, we can insert those values. We get something like this. We get 10 f of s plus 1 multiplied by s f of s minus 3 is equal to 0. Well, multiplying something by 1, we can, um, we can remove that. Um, and so we have 10 f of s plus s f of s minus 3 equals 0. And then... Step three requires us to rearrange our equation for f of s. We want a function in the form f of s equals. And this step will always be different for different examples because it depends on what your function looks like. But it seems sensible to try and gather any f of s terms on one side of the equation and any terms not involving f of s on the other side of the equation. And in our case, that's, that's quite easy. We're just going to add 3 to both sides. So we have something like this. 10 f of s plus s f of s is equal to 3. And then we can pull out our common factor of f of s. So we have f of s multiplied by 10 plus s equals 3. And to get f of s by itself, we're going to divide both sides by that bracket there. We have finally f of s equals 3 over s plus 10. So step 4, the final step here, 
uh, reintroduces this idea of the inverse Laplace transform that we looked at in our previous video. And when we look at our table of standard Laplace transforms, we can see that the expression that we have here currently doesn't perfectly match any of those in the table. But if we pull out a factor of 3, we can express our function something like this, f of s equals 3 multiplied by 1 over s plus 10. This is starting to look more like something in the form of our exponential decay um, function in the s domain here. And so what we can do now is we can apply our inverse Laplace transform. Um, remembering we can pull that, that um, constant coefficient of 3 outside of the inverse Laplace transform. We're now going to convert f of s to f of t. And we do that by saying that that's equal to 3 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 10. And in our case here, we can see that 10 corresponds with a. And remember, looking at the table again, that though a is a positive term on um, the second column in the, in the s domain, it's a negative term in the time domain. And so we have our function of time is equal to 3, uh, because the 3 hasn't been affected uh, by the inverse transform, 3 times the exponential, or e to the power of minus 10 t. So just as a couple of final points to note here, um, remembering that f of t is our function of time, which in our case is current, um, we could write i equals 3e to the minus 10t, um, which is the same thing in our case. Uh, but if we plot this particular function, we see something like this. Um, we have this, this decay curve starting with this initial current of 3 amps and decaying down to 0 um, over the the course of about a second or so there. Um, if you've been following our previous videos where we solved this um, using sort of conventional calculus, we found a result that looks like this. I equals capital I E to the minus R T over L. And in our case, capital I um, is, is corresponding with 3 and um, R um, with 10. But you'll notice this L term seems to have disappeared. It hasn't really. It's just because in our case, L was equal to 1. And so that, that L term disappears from our particular formulation. Um, if you were to rework this question with an L value that was not equal to 1, if it was a different, um, say, 2 or something, you would get something that looks like it's in this form as well. So we find actually that our um, results using... Uh, the Laplace transform method, uh, method match up with those that we looked at previously as well. So I hope you found this video useful on how we can apply the Laplace transform um, to problems such as this involving first order differential equations, avoiding the use of any calculus. You'll notice it was just algebraic um, rearrangement and substitution. And in our next video, we're going to apply these similar principles to a second order differential equation as well.